They're the filmmakers behind some of the most successful Christian films on the market today. How they got started and their new movie releasing in theaters this month, next on Significant Insights. Hello, welcome to Significant Insights. Good to have you with us today. You know, if I uh, told you that Alex and Stephen Kendrick were on the program today, you probably would not immediately have any idea who I'm talking about. But my guess is that you've probably seen or at least heard of the films that they've written, directed, and even starred in. The Kendrick brothers are the dynamic duo behind the Christian films Flywheel, Facing the Giants, Fireproof, and Courageous. Each film was seen by an ever-widening audience and was more commercially successful than the one that came before it. So, who are these hit-producing filmmakers and where did they come from? Well, if you guessed Hollywood, couldn't be more wrong. They're pastors from Georgia and they never went to film school, but they are schooled in the Word of God and they know how to discern God's direction and call on their lives. Their new movie, War Room, will be released August 28th. And we're going to talk about that later, but first, Greg Bogdan talked with the Kendricks about their foray into filmmaking. I actually want to start with a question for you, Alex. Um, you were a pastor, I know you still are, at uh, Sherwood Baptist Church in Albany before you ever started filmmaking. Um, what got you into filmmaking? Well, uh, Stephen and I, when our older brother Shannon grew up, um, enjoying telling stories, enjoying uh, making home videos, uh, most of the time they were just for a laugh or for a gag. We would do our own stunts and things like that. But the older we got, our father, who was a minister, um, we, we developed that love for ministry and we felt um, God uh, changing our heart uh, to want to do things for a, a ministry purpose. But we never lost the desire for, you know, those little productions we used to do. Mm -hmm. So we had the desire to, to make movies. And as we got older and uh, the Lord opened up some doors for us to do that, on a very small scale first, we jumped at it. In uh, 2002, uh, both Stephen and I were on staff at Sherwood Baptist Church in Albany, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I began working on a small budget movie called Flywheel and prayed the budget money in, which is about $20,000. People just gave it with no strings attached. And uh, so we made a, a local low budget movie in the Albany area for the community, not ever thinking it was gonna go beyond that. Mm -hmm. And we showed it in one theater off of a DVD player. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, the Lord did something I can't explain. We thought we were going to be there a few days, and we were ended up uh, there six weeks. Went to two more theaters, released it on DVD, and as we sit here today, that first low-budget movie, Flywheel, sold over a million DVDs. And so God did something only He could do. And what we learned is, when we truly seek Him, uh, a God idea is better than just our good idea. <laughs> and so, um, That's great. and so that became a part of our ministry. So we want to get better as filmmakers. We made Facing the Giants, then Fireproof, Courageous, and now War Room. But um, more than that, I think the Lord has called us specifically to use these stories to impart truth in an inspirational, sometimes um, um, a ministry way. Um, that they are, they are parables, yeah. really. And hopefully if, um, if people see the films and are drawn to a closer walk with God, then that's what's the most fulfilling for us. That's great. Very cool with all the YouTube and all the internet video that's going on, has it made it easier or more difficult to produce, for instance, in the beginning with some of the films where it, you know, maybe you didn't have the quality you want, didn't quite have the right, you know, the perfect camera. Um, are people more accepting of the reality of, I want a good story, even if the production quality may not be Hollywood, Hollywood? That's a great question. Uh, it's interesting that right now, a teenager can pull up their iPhone and within five minutes, it could be seen all over the world on YouTube, right. whatever they film. And they're shooting in HD, you know, on their phone. <laughs> and, and we go back to the Canon XL1 that we shot Flywheel on, and the camera's out of focus, and, you know, it's, it's 480p, <laughs> you know, yeah. with what we're filming on. And so um, when it comes to what you're seeing in a theater screen, people expect really high quality. When it yeah. comes to what people are seeing on YouTube, then they can tolerate, you know, things that are but uh, even focused. but even the iPhone yeah. that shoots at 1080p is better than our first camera for our first. Video. That's right. It's amazing. It is, and amazing. they come almost free now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. But That's you know, amazing. story though is still king. Yeah, 
yeah. the story. Well, I would, and that's the thing. I think that as you look at so much of what, what you guys have been able to accomplish, you had the right story. You prayed it over, you know, prayed it over and over and over and over and allowed God to do what he was going to do with it. So, so okay, so you did for 20000 your first film, then you yeah. went to Facing the Giants, and what was the price tag on that? The budget for shooting the movie was 100000 Mm-hmm. And um, and we and, and, and basically the way we were doing our first three movies is no actors got paid. There was no director producer fee for us. We were on staff at a church, mm-hmm. and so um, it was all volunteer except for just a s- small handful of professionals that would come in and help us with lighting or audio or or you know we bring in one professional camera. And we were shooting all our films with one camera at the time. And shooting uh, football wow. with one camera is hard. Oh, it's very hard. Do it over. But, do yeah, it over. yeah. Same point. Now let's film him catch it. <laughs> yeah, we already filmed him throw it. So yeah. anyway, um, wow. so it was it was tedious, but uh, we didn't know any different. Mm-hmm. And um, and through the first three films, through Fireproof, shooting everything with one camera and all volunteers, um, it was a blessing in that you, you get over yourself real quick. Mm. Uh, we're not Hollywood producers. We're not you know we're not any anywhere near that level. But at the same time. Just to watch just what the Lord did, to, ha- to see people see the films as small as they are and to say, this changed my marriage or this mm-hmm. helped me get rid of pornography in my life. I realized that was a giant I was facing or, or a, you know, I don't know how many businessmen have said, I turned my business completely over to the Lord after watching this film. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, um, and that, I, you can't put a price tag on that type yeah. of fruit. And so rather than Wow, how do I say it? Rather than chasing the artistic awards, mm-hmm. I, we were begging God, keep doing this. Keep, ministry keep doing, fruit was keep the goal. Doing, yeah, ministry mm-hmm. fruit, ministry, keep doing that. And, um, and, and again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade any of that, that fruit, if you will, yeah. to change lives. Uh, we could tell you story after story after story that's just priceless to us. Yeah. Now, you guys both, are you still pastoring at Sherwood? We're, we are both ordained associate pastors. Okay. We're now on a volunteer basis okay. because, and we're still at Sherwood, so that we can travel, shoot, speak, write, do whatever we need to do. And the, with the church's blessing, we've transitioned into more of that role. Okay. But Sherwood's still home base for us. Very cool. Now, how has Sherwood been able to be involved in these? Have they been involved in all the movies? They, with the first four films, we were shooting those while we were on staff at Sherwood. Okay. And the church would, you know, the volunteers of the church would step up and say, you can use my business or I want to act in the movie or, you know, I'd love to volunteer to help with decorating sets or, you know, painting walls or providing meals and things. And the church has prayed for us with with each production that we've had. For the current movie, War Room, um, the Lord led us in 2013. Um, we, with the pastor's blessing, they prayed over us and we expanded the filmmaking uh, adventures beyond the borders of one church. Yeah. And so... And one we, city. We, yeah. That's right, in right. one city. So uh, we shot in Charlotte, North Carolina with a partnership with about 85 churches in the area wow. across the nominational lines that came and supported us, prayed over us, provided volunteers. And uh, it was exciting to see uh, as we're investing in now young filmmakers mm. rather than Sunday school teachers and you know deacons. And they were great, but <laughs> at know. the end of the day, we're not duplicating ourselves. They're not going to go make their own movies. That's so right. We wanted to train, and they were awesome. Our volunteers at Sherwood were amazing. Yes. But we wanted to invest in uh, uh, the next generation of Christian filmmakers that want to do this. Right. And so they made up a large portion of our crew this time. Mm-hmm. And we were able to, to show them how we pray and work and the, the standards we try to keep when we're on set. And and uh, at the end of the shoot for War Room, many of them came to us and said, we can do this. And we were like, we, that's, the way we, we, that's, you know, that's what we want. We want you to go out and do it. All of the Kendricks movies have a specific theme, and their upcoming film, War Room, is about the power of prayer. And we'll talk about that when we come back. Our big issue on the front end is, God, are you sure you want us to do this? Mm -hmm. And we'll spend months in prayer Mm -hmm. on the direction of the story, where we're going to shoot those things. And we've learned if you run ahead of God, you're going to get in trouble. Abraham did (laughs) with Hagar. You know, Joshua did with AI. And so we've learned we don't want none of that. You know, so we will pray. And if God says, get in the boat, go to the other side, I'm with you. If the storms come, we're going to be okay. You say you attend church occasionally. Is that because your pastor only preaches occasionally? Miss Clara, I really would like to help you sell your house. That's why I'm here. As far as my faith is concerned, I believe in God just like most people. He's very important to me. Mm-hmm. Well, let me get our coffee. 
Welcome back. You just saw a scene from the Kendrick Brothers' upcoming movie, War Room, starring Priscilla Evan Shower. It's about the power of prayer and the need for it in every Christian's life. Now, it's the first time they shot a movie outside of the home state of Georgia and away from their church family of volunteers who really have been a part of the filmmaking since they began over 10 years ago. War Room was shot in North Carolina with the cooperation of a lot of churches, uh, but in keeping with the theme of the movie, the brothers needed a lot of prayer to get War Room from the idea stage all the way to the silver screen. You guys were telling a story last night about some of the craziness of shooting War Room um, that you, do, you guys just had to go ultimately into prayer and say, yes. God, we don't know what to do here. Sure. Um, can you tell us, tell me a few of those stories? Well, we started off uh, with the Lord giving us the idea for this uh, family, the Jordan family, Elizabeth and Tony Jordan, and uh, they're struggling in their marriage, they're disconnected from their daughter, they're distant from the Lord, and they meet this godly elderly widow, Miss Clara, who's this prayer warrior who has all these answers to prayer on her wall, and, uh, and she uh, engages them and specifically Elizabeth trains her how to pray and to make her prayer closet her war room. And, uh, and so you see the adventures that happen through answered prayer in the movie. So we had this storyline idea and the Lord leads us to Charlotte, North Carolina. It's out of our comfort zone. It's away mm -hmm. from our church. We're living off a of GPS on, in our cars to try <laughs> to get to anywhere. And we're thinking, how are we going to do this? But we get there and God was laying tracks in front of a moving train. We were praying and the churches are rising up saying, you can use any of our facilities or any of our volunteers or anything that you need, we want to help you. Businesses locally, there'd be people that say, well, we've heard about your previous films and you can use our businesses. And so it was just, it was amazing what the Lord did. But wow. we saw God at the last minute sometimes provide the right actor or the right actress right before we're about to start shooting. Uh, so so let, me, let me make this clear yes. So for the audience. So you guys went on location Mm -hmm. And you still didn't have your actors and actresses set. That, that's right. right. Or the locations. That is that's crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, the, but the Lord, again, he was leading us to do it. Yeah. And I don't think we've had all of our locations on any film when we were yelling action on the first day. <laughs> Not that we're trying to be irresponsible. Yeah. No, but, that, yeah. right. But right, showing right. up in, uh, in a new area and a lot of different aspects are coming together at the same time. And the more we prayed, the more the Lord showed up and did things only He could do. So, wow. so yeah, it, it, was, um, it was controlled chaos is what I would say. <laughs> and the Very Lord, cool. the, our big issue on the front end is, God, are you sure you want us to do this? Mm -hmm. And we'll spend months in prayer mm -hmm. on the direction of the story, where we're going to shoot those things. And we, we've learned if you run ahead of God, you're going to get yeah. in trouble. <laughs> Abraham did with Hagar. You know, Joshua did with AI. And so we've learned we don't want none of that. You know, so we'll, we will pray. And if God says, get in the boat, go to the other side, I'm with you. If the storms come, we're going to be okay. Jesus is with us, you know. So he was leading us to go there. And, uh, and we knew he was going to work it out. He was sending the resources, everything. And it was exciting because we're making a movie about prayer. Mm -hmm. And in the rental house where we were that was almost completely empty of furniture where we were living, uh, I had little sticky notes that I put in a closet. And I'm praying for Miss Clara's house and I'm praying for God to send to Miss Clara. And so when those things show up and our kids are seeing that and the people that are on the crew are seeing, we just prayed yesterday for this. And then this happened, you know. We prayed for favor with the city, and now they've opened up the door for us to be able to do this. They're thinking, this isn't just a fictitious story that's in a movie up on the screen with polished editing. This is reality. God is alive and well in our generation. Yeah. So, and, I, and I would say with every single film, uh, whatever the main theme or foundational principle we're trying to, to present in the movie, the Lord would make us walk that same path. That's right. And fireproof... Uh, you know, I've been married 20 years, and Fireproof, a movie about how to have a godly marriage, my marriage was tested more than any other year. In Courageous, we were convicted and had to start doing things as dads we were not previously doing mm -hmm. to be the spiritual leader of our homes while we're making Courageous. It's like the Lord would say, this is what you're, you're going to present, but I'm going to also work on you. Mm -hmm. And my prayer life amped up in That's War right. Room. I began spending more time in my prayer closet, you know, because <laughs> I was like, I can't present this as a film to, you know, to edify the church and challenge people to spend more time in prayer, and I'm not doing it. Yeah. And so uh, the Lord would stretch us while we're presenting the truth in the film. So they're, they're not just films to us. They're, yeah. It's a whole journey. Yeah, it is. It's part of your life. Yeah, very interesting. Well, tell us about War Room specifically. What's the storyline? War Room is um, about the power of prayer and that prayer really is a weapon we can use to fight a lot of our battles. Just like the military will meet in their war room 
Look at what the enemy's doing. Call up the resources and strategy. Disseminate that to the leaders and then hit the battlefield. As Christians, we really need to be doing the same thing. Matthew 6, verse 6 says, When you pray, go into that inner room, that prayer closet, if you will, mm -hmm. and pray to the Lord. And, the, and God who sees what's, what's happening in secret will reward you. God loves to be sought. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, If you seek me, you'll find me if you seek me with all your heart. So God says, chase me, seek me. Mm -hmm. and, and James says, you draw near to me, I'll draw you, near to you in the book of James. So, so w w what we present in the movie is go to your war room first and build strategies for your marriage, how you're praying for your marriage and your children and your church and, and our nation and, and bathe those things in prayer and do the work of prayer. And sometimes it'll feel like work, but to yeah. discipline yourself to do that. And um, in, in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen in the Old Testament, he says to Israel what we need in America, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and then I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, that's what we need in America. That's right. In another country. So what we present in the movie is, man, we got to get on our face seriously. Go to war and prayer first before fighting our battles anywhere else. Yeah. And so you have mar mar marital issues or you have... Uh, issues you know, with addictions or at your work or with your children or whatever, fight those battles first in prayer. And don't just try to convince people to change or whatever. As you know, we, we can't change each other. Right. My wife can't change me and I can't change her, but I can love her and pray for her and she can pray for me and let God do the heavy lifting. Yeah. So in the movie, we, we present this war room and you, you have a middle class couple with common issues. They're struggling with certain things, money and work and in uh, you know the, the relational aspects of their marriage, their daughter, and uh, we see an elderly widow prayer warrior begin to connect with the young wife and teach her how to fight the right way. Mm -hmm. Your husband's not your enemy, but there is an enemy, and you need to be fighting him with the right weapons the right way. And she begins to invest and pour in her and teach her how to fight in prayer. And when she begins applying those biblical principles, God begins doing things that only He can do. So by the end of the film, you're you've laughed, you've cried, you you've. Um, You've been inspired, and, and we pray at the end of War Room, people want to get up out of the theater or after they watch it on, on their television at home and say, yeah, I need to amp up my prayer life. I need to start building strategies for prayer over my family and the issues in my life. Right. Now, obviously, based on what you're saying, this is a movie um, with a target market of Christians, or is it a target market generally? Our first audience has always been the church so far. That's where God has led us. We've talked about who are we to tell the world to get their marriages together when the church's marriages are falling that's apart. Right. So, when, the, when we can't even decide what marriage looks like in America. Right? <laughs> that's right. So if we as the church experience revival and we start obeying what God has called us to do, then we become evangelistic to the world. Right. And so we include the gospel in all of our films. Uh, we, we've been choosing universal themes that that people that are not believers can still connect with. And the storyline and the characters of this film, people are definitely going to resonate with. Uh, you will follow Tony on his adventures with his at work and with his friend Michael. You follow uh, Danielle and her double dutch jump roping desires. You follow Elizabeth uh, in her mentorship relationship with Miss Clara in this film. And so there's a lot of dynamics going on in this movie. But um, it's exciting to see uh, we're getting really good reviews from the film, but afterwards people are saying, you know, I laughed, I cried, I enjoyed this story, uh, but God spoke to me in, in the midst of it, and I'm ready to watch it again. More on War Room after this. In light of all these wrongs, does God still love Tony? We both know he does. Do you? Welcome back. Did you know that the Bible contains 375 references to prayer? Obviously, prayer is important to God, and it's important to us, too. According to one study, 90% of Americans claim to pray regularly. Another study found that 76% agreed with the statement, prayer is an important part of my daily life. Well, today, for our final thoughts, here's one more clip from War Room that reminds us about God's deep and abiding love for us. I'm sorry. Just thought I should call Tony. I understand. You'd think he'd be more alarmed. He just kept saying that since we were all okay, I should just calm down. I'm having trouble calming down myself. Really? You seemed calm earlier. 
Yeah, but I got a huge sugar rush from all that ice cream. Girl, I feel like I can run around the block a few times. <laughs> oh, uh, while we on the subject of Tony, I have something for you to do. What's that? I want you to write down everything that you can think of that he's done wrong. Miss Clara, if I did that, I'd be writing a long time. Well, then just write down the highlights, and I'll be back to check on you in a little while. Oh, that's almost three pages. And I could write more, but you'll get the gist of it when you read it. Actually, I'm not going to read it. My question to you is this. In light of all these wrongs, does God still love Tony? We both know he does. Do you? <laughs> now, Miss Clara, you're meddling. <laughs> There's love in my heart for Tony, but it's just buried under a lot of frustration. So he needs grace. Grace? I don't know that he deserves grace. Do you deserve grace? Miss Clara, you have a habit of backing me up in a corner and making me squirm. I felt the same way. But the question still remains, do you deserve grace? The Bible says that no one is righteous, not even one. For we have all sinned. So really none of us deserve grace. But we all still want God's forgiveness. Elizabeth, it comes down to this. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. He died for you, even when you did not deserve it. And he rose from the grave and offers forgiveness and salvation for anyone who turns to him. But the Bible also says that we can't ask him to forgive us while refusing to forgive others. I know, Miss Clara, but that's just so hard to do. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But that's where grace comes in. He gives us grace, and he helps us to give it to others, even when they don't deserve it. We all deserve judgment. And that is what a holy God gives us when we don't repent and believe in his son. I had to forgive Leo for some things. And it wasn't easy, but it freed me. Elizabeth, there's not room for you and God on the throne of your heart. It's either him or it's you. You need to step down. Now, if you want victory, you're gonna have to first surrender. If you think back over, say, the last uh, <clears throat> month, how many times have you told somebody, I'm praying for you? And how serious were you about really praying for somebody? I think sometimes we use, I'll pray for you, as a cliche. But prayer is more than a cliche, and I think we found that out in this program. Uh, it's certainly more than a cliche to the Kendrick brothers because they want, they want to help Christians focus on this idea of prayer. There's a couple of things that happens in prayer. Uh, first of all, uh, it's, a, it's an acknowledgement uh, of us having enough faith and trust in God when we seriously pray, faith in God that He can do actually what He says He will do. The second thing, it's communication. It's our communication to God and it helps to build a relationship and building the habit of prayer in our lives, not just for ourselves, but for others, can make a radical difference in our lives and in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So who do we pray for? We pray for ourselves, we pray for the world, we pray for those that we don't even care for. Prayer is an important part of every Christian life. Thanks for joining us. God bless you.